Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can do a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit test using Python. Specifically I'm using JupyterLab and Python 3. Now a Pearson chi-square goodness of fit test is uh, sometimes used if you only have one nominal um, variable, so with different categories, and you want to know if, for example, the percentages are different than what you might have expected. Uh, one thing to note though is if you have too many cells that have a very low so-called expected count, uh, then you should use something else and uh, perhaps a multinomial test might then be good and I'll quickly show you how that can be done as well. Um, without further ado, it might be good to show you an example and I'll first actually clear my previous results, clear all outputs and um, I'll be using a, a CSV file for this and I'll be storing that as a pandas data frame so I'll first import pandas if you haven't installed pandas that won't work so then you first have to use pip install pandas I think um, once and then it should work then uh, to load the actual example file uh, here we go uh, I get some warnings but we can ignore those for now and um, I'll be using the marital one status uh, field and just to select that one only so I don't have to be bothered with all the other values. To get a quick look I can use values count so it gives me a quick impression of the frequencies and I can see that the model category was 972 which seems quite a lot higher than the separated one so there might be some differences than the expected values. Now, uh, SciPy, I think it's pronounced, Stutz has actually a chi-square function, so we can actually uh, use that. So, again here, if you haven't installed this, then you might want to first install it. And I think it's pip install uh, SciPy, but a quick Google search should help you out there. So, I can simply run the chi-square, and it nicely gives me the statistic and the so-called p-value, which is e to the power of minus uh, or e minus 269 which is scientific notation which means it's extremely small 0 0.000 etc. So um, in this case um, that value we want to report of 1249 and if that p-value is below 0 0.05 which it definitely is uh, we usually reject then the assumption about the population so in this case um, they are not the same because this assumed that in the population all the frequencies would have been the same or the proportions would have all been the same. Uh, what we also would need is the degrees of freedom usually in the reporting so I can simply s which is the number of data points minus one for this test which can easily then be obtained by simply doing the sum over the frequencies minus one. Uh, on my website I explain a little bit how to report the results. You might then want to follow up on this if you actually uh, have a significant result to figure out which ones are significantly different. Um, as mentioned uh, in the introduction, the chi-square test is only good if, the, uh, if you don't have too low counts and especially if the expected count should be um, all above 5 or 5 or higher. So if I do this uh, with only the chi-square test with only 2, 4, 2 and 4 it still runs the chi-square test and there's no warning whatsoever so it might be better if it gives a warning in those cases or performs a different test. So in order to f uh, accomplish that what we need to know is that expected values that's actually what it's using is the frequencies divided by the number of categories and that would then be this, uh, the expected count for each category if all the frequencies were divided evenly. I can quickly calculate that by simply summing the frequencies and then dividing by the number of frequencies that I have which is the same as the number of categories. So in this case my expected count would have been 388.2 for each category. I then pr you prefer to use a small function so in this case uh, that uses the data, uh, which specific field and uh, if you have your own set of expected values or just want to use the default um, average them out. 
Now what this does is uh, what we did before, it takes the counts, it determines the degrees of freedom. Um, if there's uh, no uh, specific expected values given, then um, it's simply actually going to give the minimum expected uh, count uh, or the, the average expected count and it's going to perform the chi-square test using and returns the chi uh, the chi-square value and the probability, the p-value. Otherwise it's using the, uh, the minimum of the expected uh, count and uh, that's my minimum uh, e at the moment um, uh, and then it will actually simply do the uh, the same thing again but then using that given expected values now the big thing here is of course that warning if the minimum uh, expected count is less than 5 then this one will now nicely give a warning so if I do this it actually uh, it runs as before and if I would use the the one with the warning, um, let's have a look, that was uh, if I would use the 2242 uh, it will actually give me a warning. I have to convert it to a data frame but that should give me a warning. In this case there is no warning so it's saying none. Like I mentioned if um, if you do get a warning then you might want to perform another test. One might be an exact multinomial test uh, that's also available in the side by stats. Uh, it's called multinomial. And you know, what you do there is you need to enter the total sum. So I already had that. The proportion. Um, so in this case, that's my frequencies divided by the sum of their frequencies. And then you can use this function, the probability mass function, I think it's an abbreviation of and simply list uh, the frequencies as a list because it doesn't accept an array I think. And this returns a single p-value which again is 0 0.0000008 and I might have missed the zero there. Um, and I like to do all of this as one big function so it returns to me immediately the next time I run. Of course you can do some kind of uh, extra function if you like. Um, uh, if you prefer not to use any library or packages, I'll explain in the appendix in a separate video um, how you could do that, but that's more of a theoretical exercise. Alright, I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll put the Jupyter Notebook in the description. Thank you for watching.